Today we got a 2004 Ford Explorer Sport Track with the 4.0 V6. Going over for inspection, found it has a loose ball joint on the upper control arm right front. The other ones feel good. I gave them a price on doing all four of them. However, they opted just to do the one that's bad. So I'll be demonstrating how to replace that ball joint. It's actually a complete upper control arm on this model. So it's pretty straightforward. I figured I'd throw up the camera and give it to you. So let's do it to it. And I still got it jacked up my lower control arm. Got a jack stand underneath it. Okay. Okay, now with the wheel off it, it's much easier to see it. That's noticeably bad. We got one through bolt up here on the frame where it goes through the upper control arm bushing. We're going to take and remove that bolt. On this side it has a stop welded on their machine onto the head of the bolt. Same thing with this side. I got this side broke loose. As you can see you don't have to put a wrench on the one side, just a 13 16 socket. So I just want to make sure they came loose inside the bushings because sometimes they can really fight you. That's one. 21 millimeter probably fit as well. Whenever you see that bolt loose inside that bush, and it's a good sign. Uh, like I mentioned before, I'm going to leave these two bolts in for now until I get this upper ball joint popped. Now I'm going to remove this upper retaining bolt for the upper ball joint. It's a 13 millimeter and a 15 millimeter. Since I found that this was metric, most likely those upper nuts are 21 millimeter. However, the 13 16 seem to fit nice and tight, but uh, most likely it is a 21. Okay, now I have this upper retaining bolt removed. There's a notch in the back side of the spindle, which when you tighten up this bolt, it compresses and locks that upper bolt joint tight. So I'm going to go onto the back side with a chisel, put it in between that notch, and try to spread it a little bit. I got the wheel turned all the way to the left, however, I don't quite have enough room. Sometimes doing that is just enough to get it to break loose. Okay, now that I have that spread a little bit, as you notice, I took and I smacked it. Smacked the spindle with a, what they call a BFH. It's a big hammer. I'll let you figure out what the middle initial stands for. Giving it a couple whacks will help jar the rust loose. And I could even spray some penetrating oil in there to help it out. But let's see if that got it yet. Oh yeah, she's going. I'll let that soak in a little bit. Probably should have did this from the beginning. There she goes. As you can see, it probably had some water and whatnot that stayed down in there and got rusted up. Now I'm going to take and remove the upper bolts. As you can see, you have your flat plate on the top. And the three bolt. Same thing on this side. Flat plate. through bolt. And there's your upper control arm. Okay, another thing to take notice. See how this upper bolt is notched out? This is part of your front end alignment. So I'll get it as close as possible by putting it back in its original spot. 
However, this vehicle will need a front end alignment after I'm done replacing this upper control arm. Okay, so here I have the new upper control arm. You want to match it up to your old one. Make sure it fits in nice. And if you need to clean anything up, go ahead and clean it now while it's apart. This one comes with new upper bushings, so we're in good shape. Now let's reinstall it. I'm just going to leave the bolt joint out for now. Get the bolts in. That's that one. Okay, that's that one. Remember your upper plate. You see, I can't, I mean, once I tighten that up, I can't really make any adjustments. Same thing on this side. If I take that shim out, I got all kinds of adjustment. Once I put the shim in, it locks it in place. So they, even with sending this to, for an alignment, they really can't do nothing without replacing those shims. All right. Now what I did, I just used that spindle to help me center that ball joint. And we're going to knock the ball joint down until that notch is lined up. And that's where the through bolt goes. In addition, when you clamp it down, it actually has a clamping force because of that notch. So. Alright. Okay, I just straightened the wheel back out. Let's take a peek through and push it down until it lines up. Push your retaining bolt through. And we'll tighten everything back up. I'm going to take and run it down with the impact. Now we're going to tighten it with the ratchet. Okay, then you can take and torque at the spec. Okay, that's all there is to it, guys. I got the upper bolts tightened and torqued. Got the upper bolt joint retaining bolt tightened and torqued. Now all it's left to do is jack it up a little higher and put the tire back on. I'm gonna take and put the slow cover back up. She's a little pushing. Tabs. Oh yeah. Tight as a drum, guys. No more play. It's what I like. I'm gonna lower it down off the jack stand and uh torque the wheel. Okay, yeah, there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed. That's gonna conclude today's video on replacing the upper control arm on the Ford Sport Track. It's a pretty straightforward job. Unfortunately, that's the only way you could go about replacing that upper ball joint is by replacing the complete assembly. And one aspect I really like it because you're killing pretty much three birds with one stone. You're replacing the upper bushings, so you got your two upper bushings if they're squeaking and squawking, which they do in some cases. You're replacing the bushings, plus you're replacing the ball joint in one shot. In that aspect, I do like it. However, in some cases, you can get these in where the top bolts just don't come out of the bushings. They actually get seized in the inner bushings. 
And then when that happens, guys, man, it could be a real challenge. It could add hours onto that job. This one went nice and smooth, so it was pretty straightforward. But if you do get some that are seized in there, I've been there, guys. It's not fun. A lot of times you can let them soak, whack them a few times, heat them with a torch, burn the rubbers out of them. You can do all kinds of stuff, and sometimes they still don't go. In that case, what I do, I take a cutoff wheel, real thin cutoff wheel on a grinder, and go right between the bracket and the bushing and just cut both sides and take them out in pieces like that. You got to be real careful not to cut the bracket. That would be the worst case scenario. However, I just wanted to throw that out there. A lot of times they do come out, but there are certain cases where they don't. So, I'm going to recommend them to throw it on an alignment machine just to double check the alignment. There really isn't much I can do with it, as you can see with those spacer blocks in there. There may not be any adjustment to do, especially since everything lined up and seemed like it was the same exact size, but you never know. So I'm going to recommend it, especially since they have new tires on it. I would hate to have them have abnormal wear and premature wear. Well, like always, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned, and please subscribe to see more.